Hey folks, in this episode, it's all about scanning. This is Twitter. Hey folks, welcome back to another episode of This Week in Photo. I'm your host, Frederick Van Johnson. In this interview, I'm sitting down with Mitch Goldstone. He is the president and CEO of a company called Scan My Photos. He's also obviously an expert in the field of taking your atoms and converting them into electrons. And we're going to talk about what the state of the industry is, what are some best practices, where things are going, and also some some things to be aware of as you sort of navigate that space. So Mitch, welcome to the show, man. How are you doing? Thanks, Frederick. Excited to finally be here. I'm always on the other side just listening. Yeah, well, well, it's good to have you on the show now. <laughs> so so let's start with just an introduction, like with, with who you are and how you started Scan My Photos and, and, and just a little bit of a background before we dive into the meat of the conversation. Sure. Scan My Photos started back in 1990 as a traditional retail photo business. As film transitioned to digital, everything disappeared. So we had to reinvent what we were doing. And then on August 14th, 2008, it happened. David Pogue wrote a review in his then New York Times column on photo scanning, scanmyphotos.com, and the rest was history. That day, we had 34,000 people online couldn't deal with it, so we had to reinvent the business. And since then, we've scanned 600 million pictures. 600 million photos. That I can't, get, I can't wrap my brain around what 600 million photos. These are physical photos. I can't, that's, <laughs> what it, that's what that right. looks like. That's right. You know, Frederick, the interesting part is it may sound like a lot, but there are literally trillions of analog photos. And sadly, with each hurricane, natural disaster, Billions of pictures get lost from each hurricane. Uh, average household has about 5,500 photos and from the wildfires. I just heard from someone in Santa Clarita out here in California, and all of her neighbor's homes burnt down. Hers was spared, and she was so appreciative because we had scanned 10,000 of her pictures. Wow. See, that, and that, that is a good segue into the importance of this conversation. So when I, when I sort of demystify it a little bit, you know, it used to be back in the day, you know, we'll say that there, you know, scanning was sort of a foregone conclusion. I remember going through Fry's Electronics and, you know, the scanners were there. And, you know, I remember being sort of clued in on film scanners and print scanners and all this stuff. But not so much lately because there are services like yours that do that for you. And then on top of that, you know, a lot of this, you know, there's there are devices that we can just go buy that are relatively cheap that allow us to scan. But that capability does not equal what you're doing. Can you draw the line and, and the line of distinction between sort of consumer based scanning and what happens when I send my slides or my my negatives off to someone like you that has professional level gear? Sure. You know, there are different options. There's a do-it-yourself home scanner. When you think about the economics, though, it's hundreds of dollars just to buy the scanner yeah. before you digitize your first image. Last thing people want to do is that's like going to a fine restaurant. You, you don't want to be going in the kitchen and cooking and all. Uh, and leave it to the experts, especially for that. And there are also uh, phone scanning apps, which are great for one or two pictures. But the average household has about 5,500 photos. So when you think that Scan My Photos digitizes about 300,000 pictures every day, how long that would take someone to do. Yeah, and to do it correctly and consistently, right? Because it, Exactly. Yeah, because over, over time, you're like, okay, here's another picture. I'm just going to slap it on there. Um, and what, what are, when, when they scan with you, when people send in images, what are they getting back? Like, are, are we getting high resolution JPEGs? Are we getting TIFF back, PSD files? And what, what, what comes back and how do I get it? Sure. They're, they're, the easiest way is you just order prepaid boxes online at Scan My Photos. Mm -hmm. They hold about 1,800 pictures. It's $145 uh, for the DVD data disk. They're all types of add-on extras, including thumb drives and instant uploading. We just launched this week same-day scanning because that was our core competency, super fast, yet we would take a couple of weeks to return the pictures. So we all got together and said, we're doing it same day anyway, why don't we do it instantly? So as soon as someone places an order for the same day scanning, um, it's $125 
holds a thousand pictures. You order it online. And the same day it's received, it's digitized, it's uploaded to you, and then it's returned on a DVD data disk, or you can order flash drives, all of that. And we actually came up with another $25 discount for This Week in Photography. Oh, cool. List. What is that? I, I had no so, idea. Yep, absolutely. So we just came up with it. It's uh, an added $25 off when you place the order for the same day scanning. Just type in under promo code. Can't beat this. It's easy. Same day. Just so type the word day? same okay. day. You save another $25. So it's $100 to scan 1,000 four by six photos at 300 DPI. Okay, so that coupon code is same day, all one word, no spaces, and that'll knock 25 bucks off. That's right. So it's a hundred. You know, when you think of buying that that hundreds of dollar scanner, so for a hundred dollars, you get a thousand four by six photos scanned. You choose all types of extras from photo soap and uh, all types of other services are yeah. on the website. But it's same day. I mean, that's our core that's compatibility. That's fantastic, and that's where things are going. I think you know people. People want that, you know, and it, one of the one of the questions I have on my list to ask you is to sort of demystify the fear. And what I mean by that is the you, I think a lot of people, what's holding them back from from getting all those images of grandma and great granddad and the war and all that stuff scanned in is like, you know, really, I, they're fine in the box over there. And now I'm going to box those up and send them to a stranger whom I don't know, who may lose all these things, or or something may happen to these these priceless artifacts of our family. Maybe I'll just let them stay in the box and you know give them to someone else and let it be their responsibility. What's your what's your retort to that to people that are just like you know what I'd rather just let it ride than than send them off to scan my photos and risk not seeing them or having something negative happen to them. Indeed. And that's a great question because it's so important. If you leave those photos in a box, they could be destroyed from mildew, all of that, wildfires, floods, you know, from the three P's from natural, natural disasters, people, pets, and what is it? <laughs> so uh, um, people, pets, and property. Yeah. Last thing you worry about is rushing back to grab those pictures. The U.S. Postal Service loved the story so much that Scan My Photos customers trust them to deliver their pictures. They'd come out with a 12-person production crew, created a two-minute commercial. But it's all about trust and integrity and who the company is. So from David Pogue, we just had this crazy review on CNET. Uh, if you go to the Scan My Photos website, there are scores of reviews from all the top. Uh, Jeff Graham, USA Today, who I love. Uh, so many reviews on us. But if you don't have them digitized, that's the real risk from not just fires and floods, but regular day things. You know, if you have a young child who has a scissor and a handful of crayons and creatively turns it into art, yeah. it's the same. It's the same thing. Um, but it's so important um, to to do that and not risk those pictures being lost. And now there's so many options. When we started, there wasn't Google Photos and all the photo sharing apps, uh, as well as all the storage services uh, uh, like Carbonite, uh, Box, Dropbox, you know, all of all of that. Yeah. And I think the best thing is one of our specialties is we've de been dealing a lot with very A-list celebrities. I have to say the reason they trust us is because of the privacy. The only one I could mention, because it was public is Katy Perry. Uh, and there was a story in Forbes magazine. Uh, her dad surprised her for Christmas. And uh, seriously, the greatest review ever. Uh, Katy Perry told her dad that it was the best Christmas gift she ever got. She took those pictures and uploaded them to, uh, at that time, it was about 50 million followers on Twitter of all of her childhood photos. Oh, that's fantastic. What a, what, what great promotion for you, man. That is, that was, congratulations. I'll, I'll beat that. Yeah, it was fun. And the important part is the privacy. We deal with a lot of agents. Uh, sometimes we have people that come here and stay with us uh, as the photos are done. Uh, but whoever's pictures it is, it's it's all handled the same professional way. Well, well, let's talk about that a little bit. I want to dive a little bit deeper into the privacy aspect of it. And hey, and if, if it's good enough for Katy Perry, right? But but what does it look like sort of on the front lines when photos arrive? Because, you know, people watching this may say, OK, that's great. But, you know, what if there was an employee there that was a big fan, you know, wh whomever, 
you know, Ariana Grande or whoever sent, sent their images in and that person that's handling was a big fan and they decided they want to post them on their social media, all that. How do you safeguard against something like that happening, you know, in, in the worst case scenario? We have privacy confidentiality agreements. That would never happen. All my employees have been with us uh, pretty much since the very beginning. And because also of the way that Scan My Photos operates, when you're scanning a 1,000 photos in under five minutes, it's tough to differentiate who's who. Sure, uh, yeah. But I, I have to say, and one of the things I'm really proud of is we really don't care if it's an A-list celebrity political leader, whoever it is, everyone's orders need to be handled the same way uh, every time. That's interesting. So you're saying, so the, the, the processing of someone like an A-list celebrity or whatever, a celebrity, their images get handled exactly the same as if, say, mine gets sent in. It's the same flow, right? Yeah, absolutely. All, all the same workflow. No one knows uh, whose is who. Sometimes, you know, we know when we see an address from Warner Brothers in one of the studios or something and a recognizable name. But we have a lot of systems in place. And one of them, when they're very well-known people, uh, that information actually gets crossed out so no one sees it. That's fantastic. Congratulations on that. See, that, that was a uh, and that's that's one of the things that, you know, I when, when I ask questions to my guests, they're questions that I want to know. So if I my dad has I'm the youngest of the of the family of five kids. Right. So he wow. has entrusted me with all the family photos and all that. And, you know, I'm like, what do I do with this? You know, so I am that guy that's like, you know what? I don't know who to trust them. Now I do. But I was like, I don't know who to trust these two. They're going to stay in the closet safe and sound until I can figure it out. So this is this is me figuring it out. I can send them, yeah, and I can send them over, right? You're not you're so not alone. Uh, I, I just got an email from a uh, reporter from the Wall Street Journal. Uh, his name is uh, uh, Willinda Winsky Bergen mm -hmm. uh, Berger. And he also is a uh, uh, writes for CIO magazine. And he had done this whole story. Uh, I don't know if it's in print yet, but it was online on Friday, all about innovation and, and all of that. And I had written him to explain about how we've innovative scanned my photos. And he wrote back, he was upset and I was like, uh oh. And he wrote back and he said about 20 years ago, his house got flooded. All of his children's pictures were ruined. He wished he had known about us 20 years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Now, let's, let's switch gears a little bit. It, it talk about the the hardware and the physical process that goes along with this. Like I mentioned before, you know, in this consumer, this consumer based society where we can just run to a Best Buy or Fry's, whatever, and buy a scanner and, and run our stuff, run our images or prints through it. You know, notwithstanding the effort that it takes to, to do a, a bulk run through that, that would be untenable. But the resolution and the quality of the final image that gets scanned, what can take me through what what you're doing on your side that's different than, you know, an off the rack Polaroid scanner or whatever that someone can buy for ninety nine bucks out of Best Buy. The the start of that is the cost. You know, when you go to a, a, a fine dining a, a restaurant, you don't want to know what type of oven or stove they use. But in our case, uh, each piece of equipment, and some is very proprietary with the technology, uh, is, is so high end. My service contracts on it are about 10 to 20 times more than the cost of someone buying a high end do-it-yourself scanner. Wow. And for, for slides, uh, as an example, it's digitized at 2,000 DPI or 4,000 DPI, your, your choice. For photos, uh, a lot of the photos we scan uh, for social media, which is just at 150 DPI, because that's what most people just want to post online. But there's also 300 DPI and then the uh, for archival. And then the professional uh, high quality scanning, which is 600 DPI for photos. Uh, and it's all just about as fast, uh, really important. Then we also have uh, something called photo soap where we can clean up the pictures, mm -hmm. all, all of that. Yeah. And I was going to ask, so the, so the photo soap, you know, I would imagine older images, you're not going to do high end retouching and restore this war photo that's been ravaged and sort of meticulously repaint the detail in there. But what about things like dust and, you know, if I send in a box of negatives, there's invariably going to be some dust or some other artifact in there that needs to be taken out. Do you guys handle that? And does Photo Soap handle that? Or is that an extra service? How does that piece work? 
It, it, it does, and I'm, uh, I'm remembering uh, last week's episode with your um, uh, pet critique. Yeah. And the first image up, you had noticed some pixelization or such on one of the pets, and I started smiling. Uh, for slides, as an example, uh, uh, we use something called uh, Kodak Digital Ice, which adjusts for density, scr uh, scratches, dust, all of that. Interestingly, the Kodak Digital Ice doesn't work on Kodachrome slide films, but for regular slide films. And remember, we're dealing with such high volume. These pictures typically have been in shoeboxes forever. They're in good condition. Uh, so they're, they're digitized. The added service for enhancing the images helps, especially if you have older pictures. But if um, the pictures are very faded, like some of the old Polaroids are just gone. It's bad. And interestingly, Frederick, I, be, before you were born, <laughs> there was, um, you used to go around uh, traveling and you could buy uh, slides that were uh, pre-shot. You, you remember those? Yeah, I remember like, that. Yeah. It's, it's, now, the cheapest awful thing with that is the film that was used for it was uh, so inferior that most of them have faded away. Uh, and that's where you see those old purchase slides that are all red colored and uh, in terrible condition. So that's where the enhancement on the slides works. For photos, it holds up pretty well. But for Polaroids, for older pictures, uh, definitely to get that enhancement. It really helps. And if you, your listeners are so smart, so they can uh, choose the best ones and use Photoshop and clean those up. But the other part, when, when I started Scan My Photos with my partner, Carl, um, there wasn't all the technology, the Google Photos, which is extraordinary, but we're only the first step. The second is to upload and save. You must save all of the scanned pictures off-site. I get emails almost every day. You scanned my pictures four or five years ago. I lost them. I don't know where they are. Because mm -hmm. of privacy, we don't retain those images uh, for more than 30 days just in case there's any issue. We have your pictures backed up. Um, but that's a that's a tough one. You got to store them uh, in the cloud using the different services and and share them, too, because they're so fun. The crazy hair from the 80s and the outfits and all of that. Yeah, it's a time machine, right? It is. a Yeah, we don't we don't realize it because we're sort of gradually making our way through time. But, you know, if you do a fast rewind back to 20 years ago, you're like, wow, look at what we were driving back then compared to these days, you know. So, so I wanted to sort of wrap this up with more discussion about the the actual process of getting images from my house to safely in your hand. So you 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 mentioned you send a box out and we load that box up, send it over to you. Take me through that. Is it is it just a hey? I have this box of stuff. Let me dump it in Mitch's box. Probably. Oh, I hate that word. Put some I... duct tape on it and put it. Give it to the mailman. You know how does. How does sure. that piece go? On the, on the Scan My Photos website, we have videos, how to prepare your photos, all of that. Really easy. Go to the most popular service is the prepaid box. It holds about 1,800 photos. Place an order online. It's $145. The box is mailed out because we're so fast. It goes out the same business day. As soon as you get it, you have six months to return it back. Take your time. Take the photos. You can put them in bundles. We recommend bundles of about 100 mm -hmm. uh, and put a rubber band around it. Definitely use an index card. Identify any special notations about the photos. And I also scan the backs if you want that, uh, if there's special writing and all. But take those pictures, put them in a rubber band, pack up that box solid like a brick, use paper just to fill it up, uh, bring it to the postal service, and uh, everything is on it. It's all coded. We also have tracking on it. The second you drop it off, we know it was dropped off. And as soon as it's received, that's where the emails just start flying. First one is relax. We got your order. Uh, and so often we get messages from people who say, what happened? I just got a message that it's done. I, I just sent it. Uh, I said, nope, it, it is done. And they open up their files with that. So we open it up. We get everything digitized. The emails go back that it's been completed. If you have uh, photo index albums, those are uh, 25 images mm -hmm. per page with it. Everything gets done and then mailed back to you. That's fantastic. See, that's and that's 
that's the complete nugget there, right? So what what's what's there to lose? And that you answered all the questions that I had. You know, the main things were around security and privacy, um, right. because that's for me at least that's the main point of resistance where I I really don't want to lose prints, negatives, or slides of family members that I haven't even met that are long gone, right? So, you know, you're, it's it, with much trepidation that you let those leave the house. So you've, you've sort of allayed those fears, so I appreciate that. Um, what's next for Scan My Photos? It sounds like you guys are literally firing on all cylinders. You've mastered the process. You've scre- streamlined it down into same-day turnaround. Is there room for improvement, or are you guys are just, just going to keep keep the train on the tracks and keep plowing forward. As, as a USC entrepreneur grad, I'm sure I just lost everyone who's ever went to UCLA, but um, it's all about constantly reinventing your, your business. Most recent one, there are so many of the problems with, with Facebook and Snap uh, and others where they're losing their daily average users. Mm-hmm. Uh, what we're working with now is trying to create a program where they can get more older users to monetize uh, because all of the older users are the ones with decades, generations of photos that need to be digitized and then uploaded to Snap, to Facebook, to all all the others. So that's, that's the other one. But the most recent new addition was same-day photo scanning. Uh, you just can't can't beat that and you gotta stay uh 10 steps ahead of anyone else i love it i love it mitch goldstone thank you for taking the time today it's been educational uh and i want to reiterate so you said uh 25 off with the code same day all all one word how long how long do they have to use that code is there a time limit on it yeah, I, I think it's going to be on for a few weeks, so they're they're good for that. But we're we're so easy and friendly. So uh, anyone who does live support or emails, we we just take take care of everyone. And the important reason is is because we're dealing with your most precious possession. Yeah. Right? No. No. Absolutely. All right. Rich Goldstone, president and CEO of ScanMyPhotos.com. Uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks for coming on, man. My pleasure, and I'm going to get back to listening to you on the podcast. (laughs) All right. I'm going to get back to making them. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you, Fred. You're awesome. All right. See you later. Bye. This is Twitter.